good morning, and welcome to our service of worship this Sunday. We begin as we traditionally do with the land acknowledgement. This morning we acknowledge that we gather on Treaty 4 territory. We acknowledge the official indigenous signatories of Treaty 4, which include the Cree, the Soto, the bands of the Ojibwe peoples, and the Assiniboine. Treaty 4 is the traditional lands of many nations, including the Cree, Ojibwe, Soto, Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, and the homeland of the Métis people. We do so out of a deep respect for their ceremonies and traditions lived out on this land for thousands of years. And as a reminder to us, the Church, that truth and reconciliation remains among our most important tasks. As long as the sun shines, and the river flows, and the grass grows, we will honor and respect this is Treaty Land. As we prepare ourselves for worship this morning, it's important to acknowledge that all in our life has not gone the way that we wanted or should, and so we begin with the penitential right. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found, and call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts, and let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion and to our God, for he will richly pardon. My dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins and bring them to mind, that we may obtain forgiveness by God's infinite mercy and grace. Most merciful. We confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouth mouths shall proclaim your praise. praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. God rules over all the earth. O come, let us worship. We say together Psalm 95 of the night. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. God rules over all the earth. Oh, come, come, let us worship. Let us prepare ourselves to hear God's word. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, 
the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I said, what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! There is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of his heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head, and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil on the top of it. And he called that place Bethel, but the first name of the, of the city was Luz at the first. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 138. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. Press upon it, behind and before. You lay your hand upon it. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go there from your presence? Where can I flee from your spirit? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. Even there, your hand will lead me, and your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me, and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me, and lead me in the way that is everlasting. The second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. But for you who live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you have received a spirit of adoption when we cry, Abba, Father. So it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. In fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory of God to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who has subjected it in hope. That the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children. 
we know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption and redemption of our bodies. In the hope that we were saved, now hope that is seen is not hope, or who hopes for what is seen, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also also with you. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Another parable he put before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the householder came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then has it weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed means the sons and daughters of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons and daughters of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and throw them into the furnace of fire. There men will weep and gnash their teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Well, it's July. There are beautiful gardens everywhere. But if you take a closer look, you'll see the weeds. I, like many, enjoy weeding. It's kind of satisfy, satisfying popping up those little unwanted greens out of the ground with my weed poker. But weeding can also be frustrating. You take those Russian thistles, for example, and you need special gloves to handle them, you need special tools, and if you don't get the deep tap root, they're just going to go right back. So sometimes, to my chagrin, I have to leave them alone. This means the tough thistles end up growing in the midst of my beautiful peonies, and I have to learn to live with it. Our parable today is all about living with weeds. The parable of the wheat and tares is found only in Matthew. Seventy percent of our Lord Jesus' parables are recorded in this gospel. And most of them are about the kingdom of heaven, our Lord's favorite topic. As much as our Lord Jesus enjoys speaking in parables, Matthew enjoys recording them, especially the ones about judgment. More on that later. Today's parable has many meanings, and I'm going to touch on three of them. And then I'm going to say a little something about its application to us as five to one parishes. Meaning number one, life right now is a mixture of good and evil. And this is obvious to anyone who has lived on this earth. The world is full of God's glory and miracles, 
and also heavy with troubles and heartache, heartaches. An enemy has sown bad seeds among the good, and both grow together, the wheat and the weeds, side by side, intertwined until the time of harvest. Good and evil are intertwined in our lives in unpredictable, unavoidable, and perplexing ways. A bad diagnosis at the doctor's office after celebrating your 30th birthday. A relationship falls apart after 25 years of bliss. A global pandemic locks down billions of ordinary lives. Our lives are disrupted in thousands of ways by forces we can't control or by our own foolish choices. The sinful and the tragic are woven into the fabric of our joyful and abundant and peaceful lives that Lord Jesus came to give us. It seems like we're living with weeds, and that's part of God's plan. Meaning number two, the wheat is precious, so don't prematurely, prematurely judge. The wheat is extremely precious to the farmer. He refuses to lose any, just to get rid of the weeds. The Greek word for weeds is zizania. Today, we call this weed darnel. You can't tell darnel from the real wheat, not at its earlier stages of growth. So if you pull out the counterfeit weed too early, you might accidentally pull out the precious good wheat. And God doesn't want to take a chance at that. You see, the children of the kingdom are too precious to God. So there's a familiar theme in the Gospels, isn't it? The shepherd leaves 99 sheep to find one that's lost. The well-off woman searches the house from top to bottom to find that lost coin, a coin she doesn't really need. And even gathering up those 12 baskets of leftovers after feeding the 5,000, nothing is lost in the kingdom of God. So our parable shows that God loves goodness more than God hates evil. Remember the Greek tragedy Medea? Medea kills both of her sons in a savage revenge against her faithless husband. When he asks how she could have done such a thing, she replies, because I hated you more than I love them. God's kingdom is not a Greek tragedy. The kingdom of heaven is where God's love is stronger than the enemy's hate. In rooting out evil, something of eternal value might be damaged. So God can't allow that to happen. Every child of God is precious to our Heavenly Father. And because we can't tell who is who now, we need to leave people alone and be like Christ to one another. Meaning number three, God's judgment will come, but God alone is the judge. Today's parable is about the second coming of Christ and the last judgment. We seem to have ignored or downplayed or even forgotten or don't like these biblical themes. Heaven and hell, final judgment, eternal separation from God, whatever that looks like. We may be blind to these theological thoughts, but Jesus isn't. They're central to his teachings. Today's parable is one of several judgment parables from Matthew. Eight parables about the last judgment are found only in Matthew. Unlike Luke, Matthew's Sermon on the Mount emphasizes the concept of hell. Weeping and gnashing of teeth is a peculiarly Matthewan phrase. This phrase occurs only seven times in the New Testament, Testament, but six times in Matthew alone. So we may be uncomfortable hearing about the final judgment, but rest assured, Jesus, Jesus is very okay in preaching it. Barbara, Taylor, uh, Barbara Brown Taylor says, The one who spoke about God's love most deeply is the same person who spoke about God's judgment most firmly. The good news is that until the final judgment, the Lord Jesus continues to sow good seeds into the world, and the good seeds are the children of the kingdom. So what does this mean for us as 521 parishes? Well, I think I would like to make one thing clear here. 
the church is not the same as the kingdom of heaven. But there's a connection between the two. First, the kingdom creates the church. And the church witnesses to the kingdom. The church is the instrument of the kingdom, as well as its custodian. Now, we're all hoping the new parish will reflect God's kingdom. But that doesn't mean it's going to be perfect or that things are going to go smooth. I think when I was reflecting on this parable, this parable gave me a reality check on what the new 521 parish might be like. Yes, God's children will be part of the new parish. So will the children of the enemy. You see, an enemy, there is an enemy against God's word and against God's purpose. And wheat and with the weeds are mixed together. And this is part of God's plan. So our real challenge in the new parish will be twofold. First, that each and every one of us needs to make sure we're a child of God and not a child of the evil one. Two, that we resist taking matters into our own hands. This parable reminds us we shouldn't start yanking up everything we see in the new parish every time we see it. What if God wants to start new ministries to serve his new purpose or inspire new ways to worship him? What if a child of the kingdom is really a child of the kingdom but looks like a child of the devil to you? What if God wants to put new people into old leadership positions? What if God wants to do a new thing in our hearts? We want a perfect church made up of perfect people. It will not be the five to one parish. The best we can hope for in the new parish is that God will perfect his love and his will and his purpose in us. As someone once said, the church is a hospital for sinners on the way, not a museum for saints who've already arrived. So let's follow the apostles' admonition to the Romans, and may his words become wisdom for our new congregation. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I'd like to end with a new rendering of today's parable by Dr. Barbara Taylor Brown, and here's what she writes. I want you to hear it um, with new ears. Hear another parable of the wheat and the weeds. One afternoon in the middle of the growing season, a bunch of farmhands decided to surprise their boss and weed his favorite wheat field. No sooner had they begun to work, however, then they began to argue, first about which of the wheat-looking things were weeds, and then about the rest of the weeds. Did the Queen Anne's lace pose a real threat to the wheat, or could it stay for decoration? And the blackberries, they would be ripe in just a week or two, but they were, after all, weeds. Or were they? And the honeysuckle, it seemed a shame to pull up anything that smelled so sweet. About the time they had gotten around to debating the purple asters, the boss showed up and ordered them out of his field. Dejected, they did as they were told. Back at the barn, he took their machetes away from them, poured them some lemonade, and made them sit down, where they could watch the way the light moved across the field. At first, all they could see were the weeds, and what a messy field it was. What a discredit to them and their profession. But as the summer wore on, they marveled at the profusion of growth. Tall wheat surrounded by tall, tall goldenrod, ragweed, and 
brown-eyed Susans. The tares and the poison ivy flourished alongside the Cherokee roses and the milkweed. And it was a mess, but a glorious mess. And when it had all bloomed and ripened and gone to seed, the reapers came. Carefully, gently, expertly, the reapers gathered the wheat and made the rest into bricks for the oven where the bread was baked. And the fire that the weeds made was excellent. And the flour that the wheat made was excellent. And when the harvest was over, the owner called them all together, the farmhands, the reapers, and all the neighbors, and broke bread with them, bread that was the final distillation of that whole messy, gorgeous, mixed-up field. And they all agreed that it was like no bread any of them had ever tasted before and that it was very, very good. But those who have ears to hear, hear. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, plant your good seed in the new five-to-one parish. May your coming kingdom find a home in our hearts. May we not take your judgment that only belongs to you into our own hands. May your glory shine in us and through us right now as we come together in Christ to make a new community of love and grace, knowing evil will be amongst us. Through Christ, the conquering Son of Man. Amen. Having heard God speak to us through his holy scripture, and having those holy words interpreted so expertly, let us now proclaim faith that we share by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the The Father Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He He descended to the dead. dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us virtually gather our prayers together. Let us pray in peace. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, especially praying for places in trouble where there is conflict where there is war and for the welfare of the Holy Church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for our bishop especially Bishop Rob and for our Metropolitan Gray and for our Primate Linda and for all the clergy and people Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the city of Regina, for every city and community, and for those who live in them in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For good weather, and for abundant harvests, for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by land, water or air, for the sick and the suffering, especially remembering all of those who have suffered with coronavirus. And for those we know and love, 
we can name in the silence of our silence of our heart or aloud. For prisoners and captives, and for their safety, health, and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and as promised when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt hear our request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. For thou, Father, art good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So today is the third day in which we'll be explaining to you some of the um, some of the ways in which the names that have been submitted and chosen for our new parish may be considered to be the one that we would like to choose. So I have today the Church of the Ascension. The name Church of the Ascension, or Ascension Anglican Church in our case, is a common name for parishes of our denomination. There are several in the Anglican Church of Canada and the Episcopal Church of the United States, but there are none with this name, at least that I could find, in the Diocese of Capel. The traditional site of the Ascension is Mount Olivet, or the Mount of Olives, on which the village of Bethany sits before the conversion of Constantine in 312 AD Many Christians honored the ascension of Christ in a cave on the mount. And by 384, the ascension was venerated on the present site, uphill from the cave. Ascension in Christian belief is the ascent of Jesus into heaven on the 40th day after his resurrection, Easter being reckoned as the first day. The feast of the ascension ranks with Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost in the universality of its observance among Christians. Ascension occurs during the Easter season, but is not a season in itself. There are several biblical references to Jesus' ascension. The Gospel of Luke and the continuation of the story in, of Jesus in the Acts of the Apostles provides the only narrative account of the ascension. Luke tells how Jesus leads the seven disciples to Bethany, where he instructs them to remain in Jerusalem until the coming of the Holy Spirit. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. The narrative in chapter 1 of the Acts of the Apostles takes place 40 days after the resurrection. Acts describes a meal at which Jesus commands his followers, followers to await the coming of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is taken up from the disciples in their sight. A cloud hides him from view, and two men in white appear to tell them that he will return in the same way you have seen him go to heaven. The Gospel of John has three references to ascension in Jesus' own words. In John chapter 3, he says, No one has ascended into heaven but he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And in chapter 6 of John, What if you, the disciples, were to see the Son of Man ascending 
where he was before. And finally, in John chapter 30, Jesus speaks to Mary after his resurrection. And he says to Mary Magdalene, Do not hold me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. The ascension of Jesus is often seen in art. You have to look no further than the wall behind the altar here at St. Paul's Cathedral in Regina, where there is a depiction of the ascension in stained glass in the middle window. Why is the ascension important to Christians? The meaning of the ascension for Christians is derived from their belief in the glorification and exaltation of Jesus following his death and resurrection, as well as from the theme of his return to God. The ascension of Jesus is mentioned in the Apostles' Creed, the profession of faith used for baptism in the church. The ascension is also affirmed in the Nicene Creed. A distinctive feature of the ascension liturgy in the Western Church is the the extinguishing of the Paschal candle, first lit on Easter, after the Gospel has been read on Ascension Day, as a symbol of Christ leaving the earth. Despite the idea of separation indicated in this act, which might be expected to create a note of sadness, the whole liturgy of Ascension through the ten days until Pentecost is marked by joy in the final triumph of the risen Lord. One of the central themes of this feast is the kingship of Christ, and the theological importance is that the ascension was the final redemptive act conferring participation in the divine life on all who are members of the body of Christ. So these are some of the reasons we might consider the Church of the Ascension to be the name of our new Anglican parish. The following prayer is the Collect for Ascension Day. So let us pray. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven so that he might rule over all things as Lord. Keep the Church in the unity of the Holy Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole of creation to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thank you be to God. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you this day and always. I'm Donna Miller from St. Philip. Uh, I'm also a member of the 521 Renewal Team and the Human Resources Working Group. So at this time, I'd like to pass on key messages from the 521 Renewal Team. As you may uh, already be aware, the 521 Renewal Name the Process Report was presented by the Naming Committee. The following five five names were approved as the shortlist. Church of the Ascension, Emmanuel, St. Joseph, St. Ariel, and Tree of Life. 
Over the next four weeks, a theological reflection on the meaning of each of these names will be presented as part of the online worship services. Information will soon be sent to every member of the five parishes to write the proposed names in order of preference. Please note that although the people's rankings will be taken into consideration, they will not be the only determiner for the name. The decision will ultimately rest with the bishop. Parish members will be asked to wait until they hear all the theological reflections before they submit their rankings. There was discussion on engagement and consultation among the 521 parish vestries. It was agreed that a plan will be developed for the fall for clergy and wardens to attend a parish vestry meeting of one of the other parishes. The facilities working group reported that a company had been chosen to do appraisal services of the five church properties. A recommendation was presented and approved to award the contract to the successful company and an announcement will follow. The plan is to visit all five of the 521 church properties by the end of July. There was conversation uh, on what vestries were thinking about reopening in September. Some parish vestries have done a walkthrough of their building to see what would be needed if they reopened for worship. Some wardens indicated safety concerns for members and limited resources as key considerations for reopening. There was also a suggestion of having a common plan by all 521 parishes for reopening. Wardens were asked to share their reopening plan if one was developed with the other wardens, the renewal team, and clergy. Also on the reopening topic, there was discussion on putting a small group together from the 521 parishes to talk about ideas for bringing members together in late August or early September for some type of event, especially for the children. And finally, August 1st to 9th has been designated as Summer Sabbath to give a break to all members who are working so hard on the 521 work. No meetings or 521 emails during that time. Please note that there will be no online worship service on Sunday, August 9th. If you have any questions, please contact your parish renewal team representatives or email stcuthbert521renewal at gmail.com.